So I, like many of you here, assuming you are American who have gone through high school, have read F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby. I did, and I can tell you that it sucked. It was legitimately one of my least favorite books to read of all time. Now let me tell you why this book just is not worth reading. It's the pacing. I don't know what it is specifically, but the pacing of this book makes me carsick. I'd rather get run over by Gatsby's yellow mustard automobile than read about Myrtle getting launched into the air like she was playing Smash Bros. While I read this book from cover to cover, it felt like I was stopping and starting constantly, as if I was in Boston during rush hour and going arbitrary distances regardless of plot significance. You'd be going along reading, realize something big has changed, but you're not sure what. You realize that you've missed a plot point. You backtrack and go much slower this time. You scour the text, and yet you STILL come back to the same place with no knowledge of what you just missed. Let me give you context as to how bad this is. During the same year, I read Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison. I quite liked that book because of the way it structured its prose. I tried skimming over it, which caused me to miss a plot point. But the key difference between Song of Solomon and The Great Gatsby is that when I backtracked to find that point, I actually found it in Song of Solomon. Both are challenging to read, but Song of Solomon does not deceive while The Great Gatsby does. A second part of this is how the pacing connects to the plot. Song of Solomon's plot is one of discovery and almost mystery. While The Great Gatsby does have a bit of discovery concerning Gatsby's past, it just doesn't feel as mysterious as Song of Solomon's and, and completely robs the reader of that sense of wonder that, the, that Song of Solomon has. The theme of the Roaring Twenties and its racing along at breakneck speeds just doesn't mix with the mystery, that is in quotation marks, of Gatsby's past. Song of Solomon does discovery well by limiting it to a few vague statements here and there, so you eventually get a picture of the dead family. Great Gatsby covers it up with flimsy lies, and eventually just straight up tells you Gatsby's past, like with no... with no nothing. The pacing is gross, but this makes it all the more awful. So I, at one point in my life, read Gulliver's Travels. Or at least I attempted to. The prose of that book was so dense but so flooded with excess at the same time that I just couldn't continue and only got to the Lilliputians. Who needs to know HOW they figured out how much Gulliver needs to eat? Sometime later, I read New York 2140 and the rest of us just live here. New York 2140 got its plot across in a clear and concise way. It also managed to make time for character development despite its high stakes breakneck speed plot. The Rest of Us Just Live Here is a much slower book, and it makes the plot fit very well to the character development, as that is more of its focus. Those two books are good at getting the point across in a way that doesn't confuse the reader, while doing it very concisely, leaving space for the characters or having the characters leave space for the plot. The Great Gatsby is similar to the first book, but combine that with a fast plot that easily allows you to miss details that are relevant in the attempted characterization of the characters. And mind you that this characterization is in retrospect because this book is actually set after the events, which makes it even more confusing, and don't even get me started on the flashbacks and empty banter. And you have the Darwinian transition form between old prose and new prose, except it's that monkey torso sewn onto a fishtail that some guy tried to pass off as a mermaid. And then there's the symbolism. Song of Solomon's symbolism is pretty inconsistent, ranging from beating you over the head with it to such an obscure and possibly dated reference that no one would guess this was symbolism. But it's done deliberately so that it doesn't get in the way of the plot, only enhancing it. This abomination's symbolism just doesn't do that for me. Or for anyone, really. TJ Eckelberg? The whole thing with him just distracted me from the fact that Myrtle just got hit by Gatsby's car. Symbolism can be hit or miss, and this symbolism missed so much that it hit the plot instead of the reader. I hate this book, and I hope you do too.